We welcome you to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. You are looking live at a sold out Memorial Stadium in Columbia where a new number one has entered the fray. Tonight, number one Oklahoma enters homecoming territory on Missouri Tiger turf. Two undefeated teams going head to head in a matchup of Big 12 division leaders. And just a short time ago, the rain began falling here in Columbia, but that has not dampened the enthusiasm of this homecoming crowd. They've been dominated through the years by Oklahoma. They're determined tonight to do something about it. Welcome, everybody, with Kirk Hurt Street. I'm Brett Musburger. Thanks for dropping by. Now that he's healthy, he's got the goods to be able to make every throw on the field. But to me tonight, it's about can his offensive line give him time to throw? Can his receivers beat the talented Oklahoma secondary and linebackers and man coverage? If they give him help, Gabbert can make the throws. The question. Will we be looking for a new number one after this game? We'll find out. Weather is going to be a factor here tonight, and Missouri will go on offense first against Bob Stoops and the Sooners. Gary Pinkle on the other side has a true freshman, Marcus Murphy, back deep to return this kickoff. But he's a Texas youngster out of DeSoto, Texas. So settle back, everybody. Patrick O'Hara will have the ball on the tee, and the two unbeaten to the Big 12 Conference will go at it here in Missouri. Low kickoff fielded by a short man on the 14-yard line. And that's McAfee breaking free, has a seam, and a crease. The kicker can't trip him up. Headed for the end zone. Will it be back-to-back -back weeks? Yes! A week ago, it was the Wisconsin Badgers. Tonight, it is the Missouri Tigers. 86 yards for a touchdown. John McGaffey, a sophomore from Galena Park, Texas, returns it for a touchdown. The extra point is tacked on. Grant Russell makes it a 7 nothing shocker here. Brent, you called it just like last week. We got settled in the Madison, and they had the big touchdown return by Gilreath. And now, what great blocking. Amazing blocking to set up the scene. And all of a sudden, Missouri gets exactly what they need to get this fan base and themselves to believe that this time it can be different against the mighty Sooners. McGaffey, though, a lot of instincts. Sure, there are some great blocks, but his speed and instincts to find that seam and in the rest, of course, is just the speed in the but Wow, did the Tigers need that to start this game? Something, I mean, we just show up and <laughs> open and kick off. <laughs> what a way to start your homecoming game. DeMarco Murray. DeMarco Murray has gone in, and he is back deep. He's gained more than 1,000 yards as a return man. It'll take a bounce, and here comes into the end zone now. And in the college game, once it crosses that plane, it's a touchback. In the NFL, you've got to go back and settle on it. That's a live ball in the NFL. The pistol formation, the quarterback four yards behind the center and directly behind him, DeMarco Murray. They throw out of it to Broyles, and he is out of bounds after a gain of about four yards run out on that far sideline. And that no huddle, up tempo, second and six. Play action fake to Murray and Jones fires incomplete and Broyles was well covered that time. Jacque Smith. And the speed of Missouri has been the strength of this defense all year long. They've been putting pressure on quarterbacks. They have 20 sacks. Let's see if they can get pressure here on third down. Quick snap. Landry Jones is going to get taken down behind the line is Kevin Rutland. The senior from Houston, Texas. So a whole lot of Texans are 
and making impacts here for Missouri early. How about Dave Steckel, the defensive coordinator, mixing up a little bit of zone pressure, bringing the corner, really the nickelback, who's lined up close to the edge of the line of scrimmage, and he just goes right around the left tackle, Donald Stevenson. Stevenson waiting for the defensive end. The defensive end drops into coverage, and the speed of Rutland goes right around him. He's now to the left side of the formation as they move him back and forth. Now DeMarco Murray pounds right straight ahead. Stop was made by Will Ebner, the junior linebacker. He, too, is from Texas, number 32 from Missouri. Shakespeare's Pizza, a tradition here in Columbia since 1973, and were they ever jammed on this homecoming weekend? Wouldn't be a Mizzou football game without a slice or a pie from Shakespeare. <laughs> well, we see what Oklahoma's coverage team could do this time. And that's one way. So on the touchback, it'll come to the 20. Now here comes Missouri with Blaine Gabbert spreading the field. Three receivers, though, to the left. And they will come to the running play. And Devin Moore breaks in to the second level before they can tackle him. And a very good running play on first and 10 for 21 yards. 71, Jason Paldrin comes around, picks up a great block on the All-American Travis Lewis. And Breno, the running game for Missouri. And here for Mizzou, second down. His first completion, and it goes to his wideout Jackson, Jarrell Jackson Jr. from Houston. And you're going to find most of Missouri's passes aren't thrown downfield very often. They love to try to spread you out from sideline to sideline, trying to find a matchup, a one-on-one -on -one matchup that Blaine Gabbert can expose. Most often it includes, includes T.J. Moe, his slot receiver, the big tight end, Michael Egnew. This time he goes to the other side to find Jackson. Blaine Gabbert with that field spread on third and three. This screen game is basically a run game if he spots somebody open. Looking to go downfield this time. Middle got it first down. Middle was wide open and T.J. Moe, that favorite receiver of Gabbert, is open for 14 yards. Uh, T.J. Moe was a high school quarterback, but a tremendous athlete. He's able to get away from coverage from the safety. Jonathan Nelson, just a little one-on-one -on -one basketball. you got to work to find an open area and kind of an option route. You just backyard football, and Moe that time finds the opening. Good job by Gabbert. David Yost is the offensive coordinator upstairs. And what's interesting, Herbie, about this particular attack is he talked to us. It is up to Gabbard, as you see Yost up there, right there in the middle, bending down, looking at his play chart. Whenever he sees the bubble, when somebody is soft, he will go to it as an alternative running game. They'll use the jet around off of it and some other things. But that's how much they rely on Gabbard. They think he's a tremendous talent here. Second down and 10, Gabbert, a little bit of a, a botched play there in the backfield, and he keeps it himself and steps ahead. Devin Moore was the, watch that, oh, this is botched up. Yeah, he looks like there's not even a, much of a mesh there. And with his own read, you obviously got to get the ball in there with the running back. But, uh, you know, you mentioned Gabbert, what he can do, and he can abort those fakes and just throw it out there. The bubble screen is such a big part of this offense. Also can run the football. I mean, surprising quickness. Bradner's punt, fair catch just inside the 10-yard line. For five with Jimmy Johnson, and now we'll see what Landry Jones and the Sooners come up with here. Again, DeMarco Murray right alongside the quarterback. Kevin Wilson has called the play here for the Sooners, and we're ready to go. Another completion, and he's going back, Herbie, to that youngster out there. He's finding stills again. Well, I think Missouri crowding the line and forcing Ryan, Bro Ryan Broyles in this receiving crew along with Landry Jones to make plays through the air. They keep DeMarco on the ground, and they are all over him. And now they will have to go up on top, Herbie, for sure. It's not as if Oklahoma's had a lot of series yet in this game, but right now they don't have a yard rushing. They're, the only time they've had success moving the ball is with Ryan, with Landry Jones, rather, throwing the ball and finding a one-on-one matchup. Coach Stuckel with the signal out to his defense. And when Oklahoma spreads the field, of course, the defenders have to recognize who they've got and get on their man. Jones needs 10 yards for a first. 
Hit on the release. Incomplete force to punt. Under pressure that time by the Mizzou front. And Alden Smith, coming back from an ankle injury, made his presence felt. Absolutely. It's so important. They've done a good job of getting pressure. They move Alden Smith to the inside, Brent. And look at the quickness for the big guy at 6'5", 255 pounds. He's able to get right around Hayburn that time. And it's not always about getting the sack. It's about pressuring the quarterback. To Might have been 80 if he would have been backed up very far. <laughs> the center. Tim Barnes, and he is a story. Here at Missouri, there is no cadence. And when you watch this center go up, he will bend his head. He makes the decision when to go. See him eyeing the defense? Now he will make the choice. Gabbert does not call any signals back there. Off we go. And there is that quick strike to the right side this time. And Wes Kemp. Now Robert, and here's second and four. Lawrence had a great cutback for a first down. Kendall Lawrence is a sophomore from, you guessed it, Texas, Rockwell, Texas. So Missouri has made a living recruiting down in the great state of Texas. Chase Daniel, just one of many outstanding players to come here in Columbia. Now Gabbard is back with the field spread. First down and 10. Great protection all day. Middle, wide open, Lawrence, nine yards. But what a job by the offensive front. Well, that was one of the big keys. It wasn't so much about Gabbert and his decision making. It really is about his supporting cast. This is a veteran offensive line. They do a great job of holding up. And if you're going to give any quarterback enough time to be able to attack a defense like that with a, with a good group of wide receivers, they're going to find somebody. I'll tell you, Wes Kemp is a key to this offense. Had a big week last week in that win against Texas A&M on the road. Second down and one. Lawrence stops short. Here's your third and one. Running formation for Gabbard. Burrows in behind Barnes. Line judge coming across, and he's got the first down spot. Yeah, there's a long way to go in this football game, but Brent, you and I have called a lot of Oklahoma and Missouri matchups going back to 07. The difference in those games was about the battle in the trenches. Long way to go, but so far, let's give Missouri and Gary Pinkle a lot of credit. They're holding up much better on both sides of the ball up front. Here's Gabbard. Lawrence picks up the rush man. That opens it up on the far side. Watch Lawrence pick him up. But the one thing about Lawrence and all these bats, and the reason Lawrence gets in there off to the left of Gabbard is because of that toughness. But Gabbard right here gets out of the open field. He's trying to run away from Jefferson, the true freshman. Picked up some big yards. Instead of throwing it away, giving up on the play, uses his feet and gets him to second and five. With Jason Palmgren battling him that time. Matt Gravener, the senior from Alton, Illinois, finally earned a chance to punt for the Tigers this year, and he's done very well. It's that rugby style. And it'll roll down close to the 20 yard line. Stands out as well. So Landry Jones is back in, and now Roy Finch, speaking of freshmen, here is number 22 for the Sooners. Jones fires in underneath. Hide it after a turnover. And now they're threatening to go ahead. Intercepted. A horrendous screen. Holden Smith has got it. And he's got speed. Somebody's got Jones, but from behind, he is run down by Kenny Stills. in the red zone has been one of the best in the country. Alden Smith showing, of course, being one of their best pass rushers as if he's going to bring the pressure and he drops back. It's a great call and great instincts by Smith. Looks like a basketball player there getting a rebound in the low post, but does a good job of being able to make the catch. And how about the speed by the big fella in the open field? That is the third red zone interception by Missouri this year. They plan to have number 85 back on the field. He's been sidelined by an injury. 
And on first down, they flash to the outside. Josie, a freshman, has nine yards. Now you can see what the Missouri coaches talk about when they talk about Henry Josie. True freshman in there. Chance for them to show a true freshman what he can do. And he continues to get better and more of a complete back. He's played a lot of football this year. That time catching the ball out of the backfield. And this is where you set up Gabbert in this offense in really good position, second and short. Devin Moore checks back in. He's alongside the quarterback, and now they bring Josie through and hand it on that jet end around, and he picks up a first down. So, they, you know, Herbie, I don't think we have mentioned freshmen as many times as we have tonight any game we've done not, this year. Not at all. Not at all. They are all over the field, and this goes to show you how important it is to try to locate some guys that can fit into your system who've got the speed to be able to not just provide depth. But look at Josie. I mean, in this offense, you've got to be able to play receiver, too. One thing Gabbard does with the amount of time that he has to throw the football is he's going to find a matchup that he likes, and that time he's almost able to hit Jackson for the touchdown. Gabbard's got a fastball, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The top yeah, of the screen there. there. Kind of a funky formation here by Missouri. He was a very fine baseball player, has given that up, and the Sunday boys will take a look at him. Beautiful to Agnew. Hit him just where he wanted it on the move. That is a perfectly thrown pass. Well, there's the touch. He's got the fastball to play before, and here's the touch. A little fake to that formation, and then just tries to get it back to Egner, who's become one of his top receivers this year. 6'5", 235, very tall and athletic. You know, he long jumped 25 in high school. Gives you an idea of how athletic he is. Indeed. As the first quarter comes to an end, Goodwin in Columbia. And this presentation of Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, returns after this message and a word from our AB. DC station. The Kirk Herbst Street and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brent Musburger. We welcome you back. Homecoming weekend, Columbia, Missouri. This is the school that claims that it founded homecoming. And they've got a big one here. Oklahoma in town. Tied at seven. Turnover now. And the Tigers are threatening as we start the second quarter. Third down and two. Handing off, trying to get the corner. They do for a first down, and that's Josie again. First down and goal. Wait, Josie has a different gear, Brent, and, and they're going to spread you out all over the field with five receivers. Josie comes into motion, diving here to try to get to the end zone and see if he scored. I don't know if they're going to take another look at that one or not. I don't know if he stepped out of bounds. But, boy, his speed coming around. That was third down and two. Oklahoma didn't have a chance to slow him down from getting to the corner. They may want to look at that again. And they're doing just that. And if anything, the right knee may have touched. Yeah. It looks like it's out of bounds, Harvey, before the, um, yep. the ball reaches the pylon, which had already been suffering down there from the defensive player. But the, as a defense, you, you, you get so caught up in, okay, here's Gabbard. He's got five receivers. It's third and short. Is he going to try to throw the ball to Mo in the slot? Is he going to try to find the tight end? Josie comes around in motion, and they hand it off. And Oklahoma's not ready to defend and hold the edge on the outside of that defense. Big 12 officiating crew. That's our referee, Greg Burks. Replay official David Dumas is upstairs. Of course, in the college game, every play is reviewed upstairs, and then they can stop. And that is something the replay official has to do when you've got an up-tempo offense. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The ball will be placed at the half-yard line. Can't get over the... We've talked so much about freshman, Brent, but just the offensive line of Missouri holding their own tonight. You know, through a quarter, done a good job of whether it's pass protection, the few times they've run the ball, holding their own against some very talented defensive linemen from Oklahoma and some linebackers. So even though it is first and goal, Gabbert will not line up under center. This is the Missouri attack. And they run it in for the touchdown with Devin Moore. The junior from St. Louis. 
line up in, in, a, in an empty backfield, as you said, and then they, they use the motion as just picking up momentum to just hand it to Moore and just let him take his chances coming downhill. Grant Russell attacks on the extra point. Now the home team leads it by seven again. Back in Columbia, Missouri 14, Oklahoma 7. And Roy Finch, the freshman, has been sent back as a return man here for the Sooners. Deep in the end zone, he'll take a knee. It'll come out on the 20, Irby. Well, Missouri, obviously, it's a quick touchdown, but it's interesting to, to see the way their offensive linemen are handling things up front. They're going to bring both the left guard, Paul Grin and Fisher, the left tackle, around to just lead more through there. More picked up the momentum when he came in motion. But look at the blocking up front from Missouri. They're winning the battle. This is inside the five-yard line. When This is like, who's tougher? Is Oklahoma's defensive line or Missouri's offensive line going to win that battle? And the Tigers right now, as we've been talking about. Kenny Stills is off to the right. He will be the flanker now. Comes through in motion. And they run to Marco around the left side, and he'll pick up a couple of yards before the defense jumps all over him. And that was good pressure by Jarrell Harrison, number 11, senior from Las Vegas. Make him hesitate and then capitalize on that. Second down and 10. Sets a screen, and there's no one with Madu on that side. Fumble! Missouri jumps on it, I believe. The crowd thinks that Missouri has the ball. Yes. There's the signal, and it is now official. Jasper Simmons was around that play. Brett, look at look at the defensive tackle on the inside. Marvin Foster, a freshman, he's on a stunt. He sees the play. He actually gets there and causes Madu to come back into the inside where the rest of the defense is, and they're able to knock the ball free. Oklahoma's turned the ball over five times all year. Now twice inside the red zone just tonight alone. And it is a first and ten now for the Missouri attack. Gabbert with that field spread. And prior to the snap. There's Madu upset with himself for turning it over. So the Sooners call a timeout. We'll take a break. Stoops is very unhappy with those two turnovers. Now this weekend, fraternities and sororities displaying their homecoming decorations. Well, Missouri's been able to take advantage. They had a big kickoff return to kind of set the tone uh, early in his game, got themselves to believe. And Oklahoma, Landry Jones, they came back after that fumbled punt by Missouri and tied it up. But boy, I, one thing that stand out is Missouri playing up front and kind of controlling things in the trenches, doing a good job. Got to hold up one-on-one, -on -one and you can't give away the inside slant. Good move by Jackson to set up Fleming. Gets to the inside, and the timing by Gabbert. Look how calm he is. Because of the way they've been able to protect him, he's not feeling any heat at all. Allows him to get into rhythm. And this offense, like a lot of offenses, predicated about timing and rhythm. And that time, you saw Gabbert and Jackson hook it up. Gabbert brings Lawrence back next to him. Plus coverage by the Sooners at the bottom of the screen. Gabbert running all the way. Had a crease. And that's just what Herbie told you. He can hurt you with his feet. Amen, Brent. And this time they bring the right guard and the right tackle. Webbles coming around here. The right guard and the right tackle. They're just going to bring the quarterback around. He's not reading anything. They know exactly what they want to do. Good job of reading that or, or making the, the read on the blocks. But boy, that shows you how much confidence they have. You pull the right guard and the right tackle and you take the quarterback right behind him. There's a jet end around, and then they come back with more on the inside, and they're getting huge gains out of first down. Back second and short again. Elvis Fisher got up to the second level and picked up a big block on Austin Box. All quarterbacks love this, don't they? Second down and one. Spread the field. Time, middle, 
picks it up easily, comes right back to Jackson in the middle of the field. Again, they're going to spread you from the left sideline to the right sideline. Because of that, look at the room to work in the middle. Jackson starting to come alive this drive. One-on-one -on -one chance. He's able to beat Lewis, who's very talented. Gives him a little shake to the outside, back to the inside. Looking at second and ten, that's Lawrence alongside. The hand to Lawrence. Lawrence makes the most of it. It's not a clean play developing early, and Quentin Carter, the striker, up to make another hit. Missouri is all about spreading you out and throwing the football, but we've talked about it this morning, we talk about it now. Just having enough of a threat, whether it's Gabbert running, whether it's Moore running, whether it's Josie running. Tonight already 63 yards rushing. They've called 28 plays, 14 are runs, 14 are passes. Hangs it beautiful. And still with a fair catch with the wind blowing, but he hangs on. And when you come back, it'll be Landry Jones in Oklahoma trailing by seven. And Jones, a sophomore, pitches it over to Finch. Finch with a good looking pair of hands, and there's a penalty. I believe there's a penalty. Gatchkar was over there defensively. Official threw that about. 20 Catch yards. I'm guessing that might be a hold, but it came from way behind the Missouri defense. Holding, Holding. number four of the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. Looks like Kenny Stills got caught up there with Kenja Jackson. Stills pretty involved tonight, making some big plays, catching the football a couple times, but this time he locks up with Jackson. So the officials getting together. Huddling on it, Gary Pinkle on the Missouri sideline. First down and 20 after the penalty. Kevin Wilson, and looks like there's a little bit of confusion here with what they want to do. Looking for the play call and the formation of just they set in the pistol. There's the handoff, thinks into the middle, and just shy of the 20 yard line. The original line of scrimmage is the 23 yard line. In the last two possessions, Oklahoma's been able to move the football and just they turned it over both times in the red zone. They had a nine play drive that ended up being a turnover, and an eight play drive with a turnover. Second and 14, Finch is cut off, not going any place this time. Terrific defense by Ebner, the middle linebacker, the junior. Ebner very involved. We say one of the most instinctive players on this defense. And got right around the block of the attempted block by Ben Hayburn. Made a good read on that play and got away from his blocker and made that. Going to go again, going to go deep. And good coverage on the freshman that time. Couldn't do much against Kip Edwards. He was on stills. DeMarco flares. Picks up a block, and he is thrown out of bounds. That time it was Harrison. Got him out of bounds. Missouri's red zone defense has been outstanding so far this year. They've given up some yards throughout the year, but the big difference is they're not allowing people to score touchdowns. Dave Steckel doing a great job this year with this defense. We go out to Stills. And Stills. Harrison coming up from the safety position and making the tackle. And here's your third down again. Show to the 10-yard line. Oklahoma down seven. DeMarco Murray. I don't think he got it. Ball on the tee. And fielded at the 21-yard line by Henry Josie. And Josie 
with a strong return. The people I've asked, yeah, they they think, did Adrian do that for you, pro? And here we go again. Now, speaking of running backs, here's Henry Joseph. He's impressive yeah, tonight, buddy. Go ahead. Yeah, he is impressive. I'm going back. You think about Adrian Peterson. You think about a few injuries slowed him down. Right. Didn't play a full career. Right. Went off to the league, and you just kind of think, can he get the 4,000 yards? Well, John, thank you very much. And of course, here tonight we've got the Davy O'Brien Award marquee matchup for Week Eight. Blaine Gabbard and Landry Jones in a quarterback duel here tonight. Second down and 13. Gabbard steps away from the pressure, hums it down the middle. Got Jackson again at the 30 yard line. First down and 10 on a very well thrown fastball. And this play took some time to develop. Another good job up front. And look out. Snap was off to Gabbard's left. Oklahoma shows pressure. Backs out on third and 18. Gabbard calls timeout. Did he get it? Yes, he did. The referee gave it to him. Hoo hoo. That ball was whistling <laughs> past where he was. We'll find out at 8.15 tomorrow night. The top rankings got him on the break. Here's Jackson close to the 10 yard line and I can hear the fans and Eugene cheering that completion. Now this is a mismatch right here. I mean, watch Jackson little move the second time he's given Lewis that little move to the outside and then back to the inside and he and Gabbard have hit that two or three times where they just little move to the outside back to the inside Gabbard's in rhythm fires it to him and Jackson's having a big night for Missouri. That's 25 yards now on a third and 17. Coming down now to 40 seconds. Mizzou with a couple of timeouts. There's that pitch to the outside. Agnew. And Agnew across the 10 yard line here. We watch that clock coming down. Deadlocked here near the end of the first half. Going to use one of their timeouts here, Brent. And that'll save them one remaining, right? And that's their second timeout. Missouri calls it second charge time out of the half. 30 seconds in the Now, they have to be careful here. They don't want to miss a field goal opportunity. Got to get that time out. Clock is coming down. It. Two seconds. One second. They got it. Agnew is down, and they almost missed an opportunity here for a field goal. As Russell comes out, he's kicked 10 consecutive. Watch the clock tick away here, Herbie. It was very close. Grant Russell, a junior, he's kicked 36 of 38 field goal attempts. He's 10 of 11 this year. He's also kicked a 50-yarder. So you do not want to deny this young man an opportunity to give you the lead going in at halftime. That would have been a timing mistake on the part of Missouri. So here we go. Barring a penalty, we've got the final play of the first half. 36-yarder. Bob Stoops uses his last timeout. You know, it, it's interesting because I, I know a lot of fans, uh, they don't like it during the NFL, nor do I, but I think there Stoops called it. I think there should be a time limit, Harvey. Like when a play clock is coming down to the NFL, the call, you get to about five seconds, you can't call a timeout after that. I mean, I just think that there has to be a little bit of a change in that particular rule. You know, but here, I mean, Stoops, he just, called, he just called timeout. He, yeah. he didn't you're, wait. You're not a fan of those coaches that stand it. right next to the official and say, not yet. Two, not two, yet. two not rules yet. I want to change. Boom, now. And I want the pros to change pass interference. Okay? I want them to go to the college. The college rule's better. I, these guys throw this ball up in the air for grabs, and you got a 50-yard penalty, and suddenly you got a team down there. No. This, this interference is better. Well, here we go. <laughs> Get off my soap. Yeah, you Get on with it here. Here's Russell. Got it. Missouri takes the lead at the intermission. Oklahoma gets the ball to start the second half. Missouri 17. Oklahoma 14. Good first half for Missouri. It was. Yeah. And Herbie had began early. Gone McGaffey, 86 yards with this kickoff. Uh, just like last week at Wisconsin, this is how you want to start if you're at home and you're an underdog. McGaffey takes it all the way for the big touchdown, 86 yards. Now, can Missouri hold up against this Oklahoma talent? Do they have enough to That's, take it deep into the fourth if quarter? If you're Missouri, what you're telling your team is, listen, Oklahoma has not played a four-quarter game all year. They've been outscored 51-24 to 24 in the fourth quarter. You're thinking, guys let's take the fight to this Oklahoma team forget about the rankings we're at home we're out playing them with our own offense 
let's not give up to these guys. And Oklahoma gets the ball to start the second half down by a field goal. Russell puts it in the air. Short man at the 15 yard line. Incomplete. So it is three and out to start the second half. And James Hanna had the opening that he needed to be able to make this play and pick up the first down. Good job of settling down right in the hole of the zone of Missouri's defense on third down. Ball's a little bit high, but of course, he's got to be able to hold on to that football and make that catch for a first down. So Tressway back to punt again, and here is Geddes. Geddes bobbled a fair catch on the first punt of the night, and that led to the Sooners tying touchdown. Get us being driven back and looks like he stepped out of bounds yeah, right there. Brent, this Missouri offensive line has played very well in the first half. They're giving they've given Gabbard time to throw. Look at this over four and a half seconds for him to eventually find his man downfield and be able to make a play. Not only that, but just they pulled him. This is down inside the two yard line. You got more coming around in motion. Backside, you have Palmgren and Fisher pulling around. Now on the right side, Webbles and Hope being pulling around and leading the quarterback, showing some agility, but it's the experience and the toughness of this offense that I offensive line that I think has really st stood out in the first half. And Gabbert now looking for some playmakers. Oklahoma brings pressure. Gabbert downfield near side and perfect to Jackson. Jackson has been his go-to guy here tonight. Yeah. Again, Brent, talking at half, you and I just looking at this first half, the one thing you could say is Oklahoma's taken T.J. Moe away from Gabbard, but give Gabbard and the Missouri offense credit for finding another weapon, and Jackson now has really been able to step up six catches now in his football game. There's 88 yards of offense Irby, already for the Tigers and Gary Pinkle. It's interesting. We had 11 possessions of football in the first half. First down and 10. From the 11 yard line, fire in zone, incomplete. Broyles the target. So, Herbie, just as you said going into commercial, I want to go back on that fumble. They confirmed it that the knee was not down, and that leads to this play, a chance for a touchdown. Wow. He had him. Yeah, he sure did. A great move to the inside, and it's well-timed, actually. Surprised to see Broyles not hold on to that football, but a little juke, a little move inside, back to the outside. Carl Geddes bit on it, and the, the play was well-timed up. Just Oklahoma that time not able to come up with a touchdown. I want to apologize for some of our audio problems that we have incurred here. And yeah, we're working to correct him. We'll get it fixed. Second down and 10. And now there's a false start. That'll cost Oklahoma five yards. There's another mistake. False start. Yeah. Number 69 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Start thinking about the mistake. Landry Jones back incomplete. And that brings up a fourth down. Yeah, this, I'll tell you what, Brent, what's, this Missouri defense, I don't think it's just by chance. This has been happening all year. They are the best defense in the red zone in the country. And I think at this point in the season, there's just a confidence about Missouri that when the team gets into this area, somebody's going to be able to separate and step up and make a play. And they do a good job of mixing up their looks and confusing the offense. At that time, I don't even think Landry Jones saw the defender. Jimmy Stevens with a 30 yarder for the tie. Pulled it left. Missed it. Well, Stevens has had some problems throughout his career of being consistent. He lost his job a year ago and now he's taking it over. But boy, an opportunity for Oklahoma to get back at even and they missed the chance. Another mistake by the Sooners. Missouri clinging to the lead. So it's 17-14, Missouri converting the field goal at the end of the half, and now the Sooners have missed a chance to tie it. First down and 10 for Gabbard and the Tigers. Stands in. And about six yards on that first down pass to Wes Kemp. He's a junior from St. Louis, Missouri. 
One of the things that coaches like about Camp Harvey is you know he's a very very good downfield blocker when they flash that screen as they frequently do he leads the way. Yeah 6'4 220 it was good to see him get on board making some big plays receiving the ball 10 catches last week against Texas A&M. Second down and six and here's the handoff to Lawrence. And Lawrence appears to be stopped just short of the first down. So here comes your third down again. I, I think running Lawrence and, and Josie and Moore, a big part of the success that Gabbard and the Missouri Tiger offense enjoyed in the first half. And they, they really split the play calling, about half pass, half run. But just, just mixing that in a little bit, making Oklahoma respect that aspect, opened up so much more in their passing game. Josie is on the field. Jet sweep, here he comes, trying to get to the first down marker and reaching for it, and it is a first down on the run by Josie, Travis Lewis, the All-American linebacker. We have not called have Travis not. Lewis's name very much here tonight. Have not. I think right now this is not his kind of game where he has a chance to get into the, the box and really defend against the run. He's out in space, and, you know, they're, they're not quite to 100 yards, but... By mixing that in, it's only going to open up the, the jailbreak screen, the bubble screen, and the one-on-one -on -one matchups with their slot receivers against those linebackers. Gives them more to think about. Second and six. Gabbard again looking downfield. Fires middle, wide open. And frequently tonight, he has been able to go into the middle. And that is another 19-yard gain, and he hits West Kemp. They have been a helmet to helmet there. It's been a big topic that's been talked about so much this week in the NFL and even in the college game. It's been a big emphasis even before this week, by the way, in college football especially. Looks like Carter may have led with his helmet when he's trying to come up to defend that pass against West Kemp. You know, there's a back judge in this crew who has come up. Let's get the referee's call first. And the aggressive one. Good throws. I mean, you talked about the middle of the defense, right? Behind the linebacker. Watch Carter come in. Oh, yes. Lowers the head, crown of the helmet, right into a defenseless receiver. It's been talked about a lot this week, and that's a classic example. Perfect. Of why You're it's right. being called. Yeah, you've got to call that play and protect these youngsters and uh, the pros on Sunday. And here's Josie, the freshman. And they're right down to that red zone. This, this drive, and I don't know if it's going to end up in a field goal attempt or a touchdown, but this is exactly how to attack Oklahoma. Spreading them out from sideline to sideline, mixing in the run to make those linebackers have to come up and support that, and then going a little play action right behind the linebackers to be able to make a little bit of a cat and mouse game with the linebackers of Oklahoma. Well, all this talk about one bubble screen after another, but Gabbard has been able to attack this secondary down the field. A couple of times right in the middle. And he comes back there again. And it is a catch by Marcus Lucas, a freshman from Liberty, Missouri, his first catch of the night. And, Herbie, they have definitely found something to attack in the middle. Yeah, he's 8 of 10 now when he's decided to try to go to the middle. And, and how about another true freshman? We've talked so much. Lucas with a pretty good effort there. Ball thrown behind him, not only behind him, but low. He makes a heck of a catch there for his first catch or second catch of his career. With the rain falling, again, I want to apologize for some of the audio difficulties that we're having here in Columbia. First down and goal. They come back with a running play, and that's Josie, the freshman. Number 41, Josie, the ball this Oklahoma defense, one thing that they do not seem to have is a stout defensive line. So here's your third and goal from the 13. Remember, it started at their own 20 after Oklahoma missed that field goal and a rain coming down. And Gabbard pulls back. I'm going to drop a screen off. And that's Devin Moore. And this will bring the field goal unit onto the field. Here comes Russell. 
Well, Corey Nelson's speed that time brought that play down, used him as a spy on third down because of his speed. He just follows the eyes of the quarterback there to make that play. 30-yard field goal attempt. He put the Tigers ahead on the last play of the first half. This is a 30-yarder. Curls it in. Up by six. Only 34 points have been scored in the wind and the rain in Columbia. With Mizzou leading on the strength of two field goals. Six and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter with the rain coming down in Columbia. It is fielded at the 15-yard line by the young fullback. Their version of the screen to Broyles. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Gatchker was over there defensively. There is number six, very active defensive player for Coach Steckel. Murray motions out, play fake, goes far side end zone incomplete. Overthrew Kenny Stills. Sooners have been down in the red zone four times tonight. And only successful once. They had the missed field goal, they've had two turnovers, and then the touchdown. See what kind of adjustments that Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma, tries to make here and see if he can isolate one of his receivers or maybe Mark Murray out of the backfield against the coverage from Missouri. All right, the Tigers have been outstanding, as you saw. That graphic in this quarter have not yielded a touchdown. Rattery, number 47, the tight end at the top. Here comes pressure, can't get there. Landry Jones, but short of the first down. First and goal, and DeMarco Murray, the touchdown maker, is right behind Landry Jones. Gets the call. Here he comes, left side, and he's short. First down, and funny, he has another <laughs> Hockley who's going into officiating. So it's a family affair with the Hockleys. Back now is Gabbert, wants to go deep. Got a man wide open is Kemp, Wes Kemp. And again, he has been able to strike deep against the secondary. Oklahoma was to put an extra defender to the backside, which left the play side with four receivers. They were a man short, and Wes Kemp finds an opening. Gabbard again has the time, but Oklahoma may need to make an adjustment. Missouri's offensive line has played well, and the defense has really buckled down in the red zone for the most part, but the Sooners still have that lead. Great number with the rugby punt. And here's Broyles, going to let it roll toward the end zone. It'll come out in the 20. 21-20, Oklahoma leads it. 51-yard punt. Only down by a point. Last minute of the third quarter, and here comes Finch. Will Ebner, the middle linebacker who made that play, I'll tell you what, he's playing most of this year injured with a foot injury, but he is very physical at the point of attack, making some big plays for Missouri's defense. Incidentally, those six columns, campus icon here, once stood as the academic hall. It burned down in 1892, and only those six columns survive. Third down coming up. Landry Jones up at the play. His father... Just adored Tom Landry, head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, and he named his young son Landry. And here he is, dumping it off, incomplete. And that Mizzou defense holds as we start the fourth quarter. Great pressure that time was exerted by Michael Sam and Alden Smith. Yeah, a little twist up front and a good job by the freshman Sam of getting home. And again, it's not necessarily always getting at the sack, but just making that quarterback feel the pressure and forcing him to get rid of the football. And that time, good coverage downfield. He had nowhere to go with the football. Good three and out, Herbie. They needed that. Here we come now. Pressway is back to punt. Carl Geddes. Geddes going to let it roll, and it takes an Oklahoma bounce. Crosses the 30-yard line, and that's where Missouri will have it. As we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary for the third straight week 
a number one ranked team in the nation, Oklahoma, under pressure here. And what doesn't show up here in our Pacific like Pacific Life game summary are the miscues by Oklahoma. They've really had some chances. Missouri's defense has made plays when they've had to down in the red zone the way they have all year. Oklahoma very fortunate to be up 21 to 20 considering all the mistakes they've made. Save Oklahoma has shored up the middle of this pass defense. Gabbert frequently has been able to find Jackson, Kemp, and Moe in the middle. On first down and 10, he comes to the near side this time. So if they have made an adjustment and shaded some of the safeties there, he comes back another way. Then a matchup to watch. Sam Proctor, 27, a junior, has come, has come into this football game for Quentin Carter, who stepped out after making that play. We saw him go into the locker room. Proctor has some experience, but these safeties have gotten into some trouble in one-on-one -on -one matchups. Let's see if Proctor checking in can do any better. Second and eight. And Oklahoma will put full four linemen down. They rush four, keep seven back, and Gabbert slides it in for the first down to Brandon Giroux. His first catch of the night. About him, the neck of the defender. Josie, the freshman in the middle. There's a hole across midfield and still going to the 45 yard line. So we have raved about the Oklahoma freshman, but this Missouri freshman has got a burst. 15. Offensive line controls things up front. They spread the linebackers out of the box. You have to be able to be able to line up and defend against the pass. You get the numbers that you need in the box. That's something that Missouri always looks for. If they have the numbers, they have to have the ability to run the football. Now, Herbie, as you mentioned, 27. Proctor did not wrap him up well on that replay. First down and 10. Gabbard is back in the gun. Steps up, steps away nobody open he'll take off and he picks up about seven yards before he steps out of bounds he's a kind of a runner who can hurt you he can pick up the first down doesn't have breakout on top speed not like one of the spread quarterbacks such as those that play out in Oregon <laughs> right. but he can be very lethal he's very a very it's smart just, quarterback. He's, he's smart. He's deceptive with his speed at 6'5". And if you leave him alone and you're so concerned about all the receivers in the game, he's got enough speed to be able to take advantage of some space as he did right there. Such a different looking formation than what they feature out at Oregon with the running back and the quarterback. Here they spread the field. Fire complete. Breaks out as Jackson. Touchdown. Missouri regains the lead. And another number one in deep trouble. 38 yards for the go-ahead score. This is a textbook on how not to tackle. Watch Jonathan Nelson, number three, coming in. Goes for the knockout punch. Doesn't bring his arms with him to wrap up Jackson. Just tries to explode through the receiver. Doesn't try to wrap. But how about the arm strength on that touchdown pass to Jackson? Well, he does have that fastball. Missouri leads it. 12.43 to go. Another barn burner involving a number one. Sellout crowd here in Columbia, Missouri. It's a sea of old gold. And the alums are really enjoying this. And here comes Madhu out. 20. Breaks the tackle. Penalty flag. A penalty flag comes flying. Madhu to the 34 yard line. On the return for Oklahoma. Penalty flag. On the play. During the return, holding number 25 of the receiver. 10 yards from spot of foul. Oklahoma, the number one team, needing a drive, and it's picked off. Intercepted. The second interception, and Xavier Gooden read this perfectly on the throw to the fullback and made an athletic interception. I think he predetermined where he wanted to go with his football. And how about Smith getting a hand on the ball and deflected? But Gooden focused, does a good job in coverage, is able to come up with a pivotal, a pivotal interception for this Missouri defense. 12 and a half minutes now, and Missouri will take over just outside the red zone for Blaine Gabbert from the 22. 
Will Pinkle dial up an attack of the end zone right away? Five receivers. Gabbard is back. Fires up to the far side. And Jackson, who scored the touchdown, picks up about seven yards inside the 15-yard line. And here come the Tigers. More miscommunication for this Oklahoma defense. And that time, Tony Jefferson running onto the field late, trying to get over on the, the left side of the defense. He's some of these defensive backs right now looking over and shrugging their shoulders, wondering about the coverage. Second down and three. Lawrence checks in as the running back. Gabbert fires. There's the hook and ladder. And here comes Lawrence down the side. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown. How about that? Agnew to Lawrence. This is what you call playing to win. David Yost, the offensive coordinator. Unbelievable call, and they have stepped out of bounds. We'll have to take another look at that, but what a call. Well, to get the ball back to one of your skilled people, Lawrence, who's got speed. This is gonna be real close. One who stepped out of bounds, first down. That's a good call. They're they saying that he field. stepped out right here. Coming up. Yeah. That toe right there. They made the right call on the field. They didn't even need to go upstairs. But what about the call by David Yost? Capitalizing, they get the big turnover. They go with a hook and lateral, throwing it a little. I was thinking. Not throw it away under any circumstance. Gabbert dives for the end zone, and he's short. They'll get one more crack at it, and then a field goal that could put them up by eight. You can see that this is clearly a read. This is kind of the play that they wanted to go with. Beal followed the back. Maybe Oklahoma underestimating the speed of Gabbard. He pulls that, cuts underneath the block, and then almost is able to get into the end zone. Good job that time. Nice read by Blaine. Gabbard comes close to getting the football into the end zone for a big lead for Missouri. 23-yarder now. And Russell nails it. What a weapon he is. One of the best kickers of the Big 12. Will it be three straight weeks that number one has gone down? So this is one of the largest homecomings in the country. Here at Missouri, they say they, they invented the tradition. And a huge crowd on hand here. And it'll come out on the 20-yard line. 71,004 on hand here today, and we want to remind you, of course, that Sunday football tomorrow, NFL Countdown presented by IBM on ESPN, Sunday at 11 a.m. Chris Berman and the guys will have updates from all around the country. Eagle quarterback, is it a controversy? Andy Reid spinning back and forth from Kevin Kolb to Michael Vick. And how about Brett Favre's return to Lambeau? That is tomorrow at 11 a.m. That's just a, an example of their troubles on the road. And here tonight, they're down 29-21, deflected, incomplete. On that third down, Kenny was the intended receiver. And here it comes, fourth and six with nine minutes to go. They'll have to punt it away. Brent, they've been doing this all night. Defensive ends, like a zone pressure. They're just faking like they're going to rush. They drop back, zone pressure, and then they just sit in the throwing lane in the window of the quarterback on those quick throws, those slants that Oklahoma likes to throw so much. Dave Steckel, good job of taking away the easy underneath routes of Landry Jones tonight. Saw the injured Carter. Geddes is back deep to return. Trustway punting it. Gets it off. And it hits a Sooner at about the 23-yard line. And so when you come back, that's where Blaine Gabbard and the Tigers will have it. Number one in trouble for the third straight week. So here's your story. A couple of weeks ago, Alabama went into South Carolina. They were upset. Ohio State moved to one last Saturday night. They were dumped. Here tonight, as we switch to the BCS rankings from the AP, Oklahoma number one, they're down eight here in the fourth quarter. And Gabbard back in the gun. With the field spread, he's going to flash it off to the side now. They'll go to work on that screen game. And they pick up a couple of yards on that pass to young Murphy out there. You know, Herbie, if you go back to just the Associated Press poll, 
The last time that research could find that there were three consecutive weeks in which the top ranked team in the nation fell, 1960, Minnesota went down. Then it was Iowa, they went down. Would you believe it? Missouri was the third number one ranked team and they went down. That's a big milestone for the yeah, Herbstreit family, yeah. huh? That was my dad's senior year. Absolutely, Ohio at Ohio State. Here's the handoff now to Devin Moore. Moore crashes through, got a first down, breaks the daylight, wrapping up the ball. Back on the field is Quentin Carter defensively. He was trying to strip him, and they could not. Devin Moore takes it to the Sooners 36 on a 39-yard run. Good block here by Tim Barnes and Dan Holt leading the way. But right here, Oklahoma starts to not only have poor tackling, they're trying to strip the ball. Moore keeps his feet moving and picks up another 20 yards. Poor tackling this time by Tom Ward, who had a chance. Quentin Carter, who's back in the game. Fleming getting dragged along. Jonathan Nelson got another 15 or 20 yards. Gabbard back with the field spread again. Looking downfield, fires middle. Got another one. Inside the 20 to TJ Moe, making a living tonight. Going right down the middle of the field against the Sooners. Interesting this time that Quentin Carter was a little hesitant to come up to make the play. Watch 20 this time. Remember, he slows down a little bit. One time he got called for a 15-yard penalty for a helmet to helmet. Another time he came in with his shoulder, and I think he got a bit of a stinger. That time hesitant and allowed Mo to make the catch. Gabbard has thrown for better than 300 yards here tonight as he picks up 18 more. Runs up on the handoff, and here's Josie, short of the end zone. Boy, this, this offensive line, I said it in the first series. The difference between the games when Chase Daniel was here and what we're seeing tonight is the Missouri offensive line, a veteran group, taking control of this game and giving this running game enough Missouri has 154 yards rushing tonight against the Sooners. Fisher, Palmgren, Barnes, Webbles, and Hope. Here's the Tiger. They're going to direct snap it now to James Franklin. He can run it out of it. Here's their formation. Here he comes. And he is stopped as he keeps on running for the end zone. Arms aren't up yet. There's a touchdown signal by the line judge. That is freshman. James Franklin. He's a young man from Texas, and he ran him in to run the Tiger. They told us yesterday, watch for this formation, and David Yost pulls the trigger. Great job by Franklin, and a play that almost illustrates the football game. Look at the offensive line helping push the Sooners into the end zone. And on the back side of that video, it looked like Franklin was almost parallel to the surface of the field. I don't know how he's able to stay up. This will be a great angle. He's on top of a Sooner defender. I don't think he ever touches the ground. But what an effort by not only Franklin, but the offensive line right there. It looks like he's down, but he's actually laying on top of an Oklahoma defender. It is so important for good play callers to keep something in their hip pocket for when you come down the stretch. Some of them are forever calling all their gadgets in the first half. But here, David Yo sat on a play, and he wanted a kill shot with the young man. The biggest game in years, in years for Missouri. And he sent the young man out with the Tiger formation. How about after the big interception? They went with the hook and lateral. You think about the hook and lateral, and you think about putting Franklin in two plays that they've kind of saved here for this second half. David Yost is one of the most interesting coordinators that you will ever talk to. He will tell you everything and anything that you want After to know. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Touchdown, and now Missouri's got number one in serious trouble. <laughs> How about this? We talk so much about the BCS standings tonight, number one. Don't look now, but the old Missouri Tigers sitting at 11, if they hold on here, are undefeated. And when you knock off number one, you're going up. Got Nebraska next week. 36 21. Missouri, 36. Six. Devin Moore gets the handoff. 
And Devin Moore running very well late in this game. Remember this running back by committee. In Oklahoma out of timeouts, third down and six. OU down two scores. Gabbard fires. Very impressive performance by Blaine Gabbard coming back to Jackson. Gabbard's pass complete to number 29, Jarrell Jackson. So a reminder that you can stay tuned on these ABC stations for your late local news. And of course, if you haven't had enough football, go on over to ESPN2 and watch Sports Center for post game analysis and today's scores and highlights as we come down to the end. How about Jackson limping off here? I don't know if he's going to come out of the game, but. Did he ever step up tonight? Nine catches, 140 yards, and a touchdown. And to think that Mo and Egnu were really the go-to guys for Gabbard coming into tonight, but Jackson steps up with his opportunities. Won't it be interesting if Ooh. this holds up? Fourth down. Here we come now. Let's see what they want to do. Bringing in the big boys. Jumbo. <laughs> bringing in the biggins. Here's the quarterback, Blaine Gabbert, young man from Baldwin, Missouri. 14 and 5 as a starting quarterback at Missouri. 6'5, 230, a junior. Look at Oklahoma, Brent. You mentioned out of timeouts. Five minutes to go, fourth down. If they don't stop them here, it's going to be tough for Oklahoma to, to have any chance of getting back in this game. And it looks like they're just going to put the play clock down to 10. A rare under center snap. There they are on fourth and one straight ahead by Gabbert. Keeps burrowing for the first down. 71,000 on hand for homecoming, and I don't think a soul has left. How fitting for this offensive line. Look at Fisher, 72. He's played in a lot of these games. He's a three-year starter. He's had his chance in the past against Oklahoma and Texas and not been able to come through. Three-year starter as a junior cannot say enough about the difference between this Missouri team from the years past and this year. That offensive line is impressive. Doing a great job all night. They really have done a great job, Ruby. Really. Had four starters return. Josie in now is the running back. Long side, they'll let the freshman. Yeah, and people that have maybe not seen this game, or you think, you know, what's the difference? How come Chase Daniel couldn't knock off Oklahoma? I can tell you again, just to reiterate, the difference to me in watching Missouri, an offensive line that's tough, good group of wide receivers. Sure, Gabbert's making plays. But a tenacious defense to go along with an offense that's executing makes Missouri a kind of a, a veteran team in some key areas. Kind of a tough team. Do you know who's going to lose a bet tonight? Who's that? Quarterback <laughs> by the name of Sam Bradford. Remember Denario Alexander? Yeah. Caught a touchdown pass he for the stepped Rams. Up last They're week. down in Tampa. Sam, get ready to reach for your wallet, young man. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of fine young men who came from these programs. There's Josie. I want to remind everybody to stay tuned for the Ford wrap up. That'll come up right after this game as we close in on three straight weeks of a number one ranked team going down. Meanwhile, should Oregon climb to number one in the BCS rankings? Well, who knows? Maybe we'll have a fourth straight week when they take on USC. And here, Missouri. Up by nine, Royals back deep, makes the fair catch at the seven yard line. 239 now. But my point, my point there is Boise all of a sudden is no longer a cute little story. They are now tomorrow. Good chance that they move up to two. Now I know Auburn's still out there. Auburn knocks off a, a powerhouse today, an undefeated LSU. They're gonna move up the Missouri Tigers if they hold on. They're not going to move up into the top two or three, but they're going to be now be a there. team to look out for. Michigan State's a team to look out for. DeMarco Murray is there. Henry Jones. In the end zone, and he has to throw that one away. Murray was being covered by Smith. Jacque Smith picked up number seven. And I, I'm just a lot of confusion on the left side of Oklahoma's offensive line. The left tackle, Donald Stevenson, ended up just 
blocking air. The twist that time completely confused the Sooners' left side of the line. There's Jones back in the end zone, and he gets it off again with Smith. Smith made back-to-back -back outstanding plays for this defense. But Herbie, you've been saying it all night. Yeah, the mean, difference with Missouri is this defense. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and in the trenches on both sides. And I'll tell you, this, the speed and determination of the Missouri defensive end, they've been in the backfield a lot tonight against Landry Jones. Landry Jones fires deep. Incomplete. Almost blocked. Way goes down. There's no penalty. And a fair catch by Geddes. And the end is at hand. It'll be three straight weeks that a number one team has gone down. Just a remarkable, remarkable turn of events here in college football. Now the PA announcer <laughs> has made the announcement. Stay off the field at the end of the game. Somewhat similar to the announcement we heard in Madison, Wisconsin last week, I might add. And here they are. Alabama, a loser. South Carolina, Ohio State, a loser at Wisconsin. Oklahoma, in need of a sooner miracle. Devin Moore. Whistle down. It'll be second down. Oklahoma without yeah, timeout. Missouri just trying to work this clock down best they can. The stadium starting to realize that you know what? It's it's almost a reality. It's it's not a dream. What a scene this morning we had to start off today with college games. Yep. Just amazing what, turnout. One of our fine executives, John Walsh, graduated from Missouri. Hey. Missouri has a different look and a different feel. There's a confident quarterback in Gabbard, but they're more physical. And it's going to take that kind of effort again next week as they go up against uh, the Cornhuskers on the road, especially. And Josie's in. I see that Miners is one of the offensive linemen now. And the freshman just hanging on to the ball inside of a minute. And Missouri, it's been a long time, a real long time since the Tigers have celebrated a win over Oklahoma. For Gary Pinkle, this will be the first time that he will have beaten the Sooners. He's the calmest of guys, and he has done a fabulous job of putting this program back together here in Columbia. Remember the first couple of years here, he was under enormous pressure. Didn't shake him, stayed with his program, switched the offense. Brought it down to the last nine seconds. Look at him. He's not even taking the headset off. He's keeping it on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 1998, ladies and gentlemen, the late Larry Smith, a good friend. He was the last head coach of Missouri to upset Oklahoma. And now Coach Pinkle will get his first with nine seconds to go. The headset's still on. Pete Carroll would have thrown it up into the stands. And smiling. <laughs> I, I just want to reiterate what you're saying. It, this team, not only are they going to win this game, it's the way they go about their business. It's a well-coached football team. They've been waiting for their opportunity to capitalize on a situation like this against a powerhouse like Oklahoma. Sooners came in number one in the BCS standings, but it's not just that they won the game. It's how they went about and took care of uh, this football game tonight. One of the great nights in Missouri football history. They were able to close the deal. And Oklahoma came back at them in the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, Missouri just seized control. And you, you could almost see the emotion on his face. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the other side, Bob Stoops has to put the franchise back together again. Way, way too many mistakes for an Oklahoma football team. Man, this crowd. Go more. 
Cuts to daylight, tripped up, still running, tries to get wide, and there he laterals it off. Gets Broyles. Broyles comes back the other way, but it's not going to matter. The students have come on the field, and they shouldn't do that. That'll do it. There's a penalty flag, so hang on, ladies and gentlemen. The students came on the field too early now. The Missouri Tigers, 36. I don't know that it's going to matter, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think this crew is going to get them back off the field. What happened to that announcement? <laughs> the goalposts are coming down. They've been lowered. See how long until we can't see any more AstroTurf. Gabbert's over there. A lot of these youngsters from Texas, of course, know each other from their high school days on both sides. An amazing sequence. Alabama two weeks ago, Ohio State last Saturday night, and here tonight, Oklahoma. Let the madness begin in the BCS. It just continues. Next week, Oregon. Currently number one in the human polls. And they could climb to the top in the BCS rankings. There is a very emotional scene right there. You can just imagine the thoughts that, that Coach Pingle has. In his first win against either Oklahoma or Texas, as a matter of fact. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews with Coach Pingle. Aaron. Well, first of all, congratulations are in order. Please tell me, where does this win rank for well, you? Oh, it's huge. I mean, it's just gigantic. It's, not, it's uh, been a long time coming. Oklahoma's a great team, and we're fortunate to pull our team at halftime. This is a battle. I mean, we, we're playing a great team that wins, and uh, it's not easy. And uh, so I'm, I'm just real proud of our football team, and this is great for our fans, Missouri fans, and Columbia and the state of Missouri, too. What does this mean to the program? They didn't listen about not coming on the field, by the way. <laughs> well, we kind of use that respect factor. We kind of threw it out to them quite a bit, and uh, and the kids uh, battled through, so it's a uh, great, great win. Well, Blaine, there was a nice moment here when your head coach came over. What did he say to you? Uh, it's an instrumental win for this program, and we've worked hard for this, and all we had to do was believe. I have to ask you guys, the one group that I talked to yesterday that said we've been taking a backseat to the offense in this game, the defense. Why were things working for the defense today? Well, you know, I think, I think we, had, we had to deal with all the momentum that they had out there, but the turnovers, and we had some great stops in the second half when we needed them. What was the key for the offense? You guys were so balanced throughout the night as well. Uh, field position. The defense did a great job winning the turnover battle. And I believe that's 29 straight wins that we win the game if we win the turnover battle. Congratulations. Stay safe out here, guys. All right, Brian. And the souvenirs head on out. Local establishment. Here they come. And uh, Herbie, here are our standings now. Yeah. Look, look at Missouri. Look who's at number one look, in the South. <laughs> look at Missouri. There. Oh, <laughs> take a step back for a second there. Uh, but Missouri, of course, at the top undefeated. Have Nebraska. We've been talking about that on the road next week in Lincoln. Just makes that game that much bigger for Missouri. 36-27 is our final score. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC. Another number one has bitten the dust. Down goes Oklahoma. Now we take it to Times Square for the Ford wrap-up. Take it away, Robert Flores. Some scene here in Columbia.